Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you the exciting world of immersive 3D spaces inside of Microsoft Teams meetings. So this isn't actually a video game that you're seeing here. This is actually a Teams meeting which is taking place in virtual reality using an avatar. So let's jump in and take a look at how we can start one of these Teams meeting spaces. So to actually get into the immersive space, all we need to do with inside of our Teams meeting is select the view button across the top and then select immersive space 3D. Now this might take a minute or two to load. Um, you will see a progress bar as it's loading, but it's not as quick a transition as it is to maybe move to one of the other types of views. So I'm just gonna pause the video for a second just whilst it's loading. Now, I only have paused this video for about 30 seconds, but it is worth noting that if you're going to use this for a social event or a meeting, it's worth just making sure you get on a little bit early before the meeting starts. Now, this is what the immersive space then will look like. Um, this is just the default one. Um, so we can see, we can look around like so. And it's pretty cool. Um, we can move around just using the kind of keys, the, the arrows directional pad on our keyboard. And we can see there's a few different areas. We've got like a meeting space. In fact, actually, you can go and take a seat. Um, if someone was presenting, uh, we can choose to take a seat and sit down and watch whoever is actually presenting at that point in time. Um, we can then, as I say, still keep looking around if there's other people there. I can choose to walk around again. Now, you'll see there's a line on the floor here, and as soon as I kind of walk past this, it's telling me that I've left the team screen sharing area. So that is obviously the presentational kind of area, whereas everywhere else is a bit more for kind of like socializing. So maybe you're having, say, a town hall meeting or some kind of larger sort of conference where people are presenting over there, and then maybe some of these areas could be used for things like breakout sessions. We can also see down here, um, we've got like a little fire pit kind of area um, that actually everything that's got something that you can interact with has got like a little eye above it. So you can click on this, you can see it says marshmallow roast, roast marshmallows and socialize to recreate the experience of gathering around an open fire. So one of the little activities that we can do here is choose to um, roast marshmallows. Another little activity, which I'm actually going to take you to, which I think is pretty cool, is a kind of beanbag throw. So you could actually have almost like a little competition or some kind of social sort of gathering down here. So all we need to do is pick up a beanbag and then we can choose to throw it. That was a terrible attempt. Let's try again. I can assure you, when I did this last time, I actually managed to get it in. Oh no. Um, but if you do get it in, I think like a little sort of firework sort of thing goes off and it sort of makes a cool little noise. So I'm going to have one last go. Oh, terrible. Terrible. Um, further down here. Now, this, I must admit, I haven't quite wrapped my head around fully yet why uh, you would kind of use this. But essentially, what this is, is you can click these different sort of orbs which are flowing around and it makes a little bit of sort of sound. So each orb. When you click it, it makes a different sound. So maybe as a team, you could try and make a little tune out of that. So this is this first kind of map. Now there is multiple different maps as well um, that you can go to. Um, and you can change these in the um, environmental settings. So you can see the current one I'm in is just called Lake House, which is the retreat for socializing and play. We also have Workshop, which is for breakout rooms, for creative collaboration. We've got Oasis, which is the large meeting space for large groups and Oasis Small. So maybe let's just jump into the workshop one and I'll walk you around each of these different maps so you can see what it looks like. Changing environments only again will take maybe somewhere between 10 and 30 seconds once you've selected it and you will see a little progress bar as you're moving between those different areas. So here we go and um, now we're in the workshop map and again I can move around have a little look around and actually there's multiple different spaces. So you've got like numbered rooms. So this is number two. So you might say, okay, we're gonna have a meeting and everyone's gonna join in um, on a certain topic under meeting room two. I think this is meeting room four. So we'll look over here. Again, you can see I can choose to take a seat on a bench or at the table if I wanted to. And there's plenty of other sort of spaces. 
there's a main kind of area here and again this could be a sort of presentational area so if everybody who was part of the main kind of conference or day um, maybe the keynote would take place somewhere like this and then some of the kind of breakout sessions would take place in one of these other meeting room areas but let's have a little look over here but they all are very similar nothing too different in these table rooms for breakout sessions so this is perfect for a bit more of a kind of formal day maybe where as i say you're going to start off with a keynote um in this area here and then maybe you've got different type of sessions trainings things like that get togethers which are happening in these other workshop rooms so let's take a look at the next area which is the oasis the large um and we also have oasis small well oasis large um, again is really great for larger kind of get togethers um sort of group company conferences things like that So let's take a little look around. Again, we've got this kind of little um, sort of conference area here. It's a little bit smaller probably maybe than the last one. Um, then again, we've got um, some little sort of areas here. So if anything, this probably is slightly smaller than the last one. So depending on the size of your team, um, you might be that's turning up to the event, you might sort of want to sort of have a little look at both of these and then choose which one you think is gonna be best. Obviously, the last, uh, the last one, I think, has got those bigger kind of meeting rooms and things like that. So um, that's pretty cool. And then the final map um, in the environment settings, um, we'll go to Oasis Small. So this is much smaller. Um, this is probably the smallest map of all. So this is probably best for literally just team meetings. So if it's not like a, a large kind of get gathering, um, you can see here we've got however many chairs. We've already got about eight something like that so for a, a sort of small sort of team this is probably perfect there's a few other kind of environmental settings that we can change as well for each of the maps so if you go into here and then go under uh, seat settings you can see we've got a couple of different options so we've got horseshoe table here or maybe we could go with um, a round table so click on apply and that's going to swap the seating out in this particular layout so now we've got a round table which is probably better for especially like social sort of gatherings and things like that where people are talking a bit more um, there's a semicircle table or if you just wanted just purely just an empty space so people just stand around and they can kind of move around at their own leisure you can choose to remove the table as I, say, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel it really helps me grow um, and get in front of more people now just looking back at this um, one of the final things I want to talk about is some of the reactions that you can do so these are the typical kind of reactions that we see inside of Microsoft Teams meetings anyway so like a thumbs up or a heart and you can see the emojis kind of pop up out of my avatar as well. Um, there's also some other additional kind of um, things we can do. Um, so for example, um, we've got things like wave. So you can choose to interact with people in a bit more of a kind of physical kind of way. So maybe some sort of thinking, a yes, nod or things like that, which can help um, with that kind of integration of the actual real world feeling of the meeting. We can also customize our avatar. So you can see I've got my avatar here. Um, and we can choose to create even more if we wanted to, or we can choose to customize the avatar that we've got. Now, this includes uh, things like skin tone, uh, the shape of your face, um, hair and beard, and so much more. So you can choose to go for all of this and configure um, the kind of look and feel of your avatar, um, try and make them look like you or, or have it you wish to uh, represent yourself. Um, and you can change some of the clothing and things like that as well. So there's a wardrobe of different things you can wear. It's worth noting as well that you're only designing this from the waist up. Um, there is no kind of like uh, trousers or anything like that or legs. You are kind of just this hovering kind of um, thing from the waist upwards. So you only need to worry about sort of the shirt or the jumper or whatever it is that you're wanting to um, for your avatar to wear. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please use the comments feed below to ask any questions, give the video a like, and of course, subscribe to my channel for any future content. It'd be really interesting to know as well if you guys plan on using Mesh um, and these immersive 3D spaces and what you're planning on using them for. It'd be really great to hear your stories in the comments feed below. If you've got any ideas of how you would like to kind of see any future video or content related to Microsoft Teams, again, let me know uh, in the questions and the comments feed below. Thank you so much for watching this video.